Methods for securing classroom doors is one aspect of school security that should be addressed in the emergency plans for a school. During an active shooter incident or other lockdown situations, students and teachers may need to shelter in place behind a locked classroom door or evacuate to a safe location if necessary. It's important to plan for both possibilities. The final report of the Sandy Hook Advisory Commission includes several recommendations regarding classroom doors, including recommendation number one, classroom doors should be lockable from inside the classroom. Another recommendation of this report addresses the distribution of keys to all staff, including substitute teachers. The report states, the testimony and other evidence presented to the commission reveals that there has never been an event in which an active shooter breached a locked classroom door. Traditional lock sets provide the required level of security for classroom doors, but it is important to consider the location, type, and size of glazing adjacent to the hardware to ensure that the lock set cannot be defeated by breaking the glass. The National Association of State Fire Marshals, or NASFM, has published a set of guidelines for classroom door security. In some jurisdictions, these recommendations may be mandatory depending on applicable codes, laws, and regulations. The guidelines include classroom door hardware that meets the following criteria. Hardware that is lockable from inside the classroom without opening the door to minimize the teacher's exposure. Access from outside of the classroom by emergency responders using a key or other credential. Egress without a key, tool, special knowledge or effort, and one operation to unlatch the door. Operable hardware mounted between 34 inches and 48 inches above the floor, and no tight grasping, tight pinching, or twisting of the wrist to operate, with the bottom 10 inches on the push side of the manual doors a flush, smooth surface. If a classroom door is fire rated, the door must be self-closing and self-latching. It may not be modified in a way that invalidates the fire rating. There are many retrofit security devices, also known as barricade devices, on the market today, which do not meet these guidelines. These devices typically barricade the door, delaying or preventing egress and often making it impossible for staff and emergency responders to open the door from the outside. Check the local code requirements to determine whether these devices are allowed by the authority having jurisdiction. There are several lock functions that are commonly used in schools, and there are pros and cons to each. All of the following lock functions allow immediate egress and authorized access, in accordance with the NASFM guidelines. The classroom security function allows a teacher to lock the outside lever without opening the door by inserting a key in the cylinder on the inside lever. While the use of a key ensures that only an authorized person can lock the classroom door, some staff members may have difficulty using fine motor skills to lock the door in a high-stress situation. Lockdown drills and practice will help to familiarize teachers with the operation of the lock, and an indicator will confirm that the lock has been put into lockdown. An entrance function or office function lock is locked by turning a thumb turn or pushing a button on the inside lever. This makes it easy to lock the outside lever without opening the door, but it is also possible for the door to be locked by an unauthorized person, including someone who may want to secure a classroom to commit an assault, theft, vandalism, or other crime. If this lock function is used, staff should carry keys to unlock the door from the outside in case of an unauthorized lock drown. Many schools have existing classroom function locks, and some have instituted a policy in which classrooms are kept locked at all times. This makes the lock's operation similar to a storeroom function lock in which a key is required to retract the latch to enter the room. Keeping a classroom locked at all times means the teacher has to open the door for students to enter. This strategy makes sense when budgetary constraints prevent replacement of the locks with new locks that can be locked from inside the classroom without opening the door, but it can be inconvenient to keep the doors locked at all times. Electronic classroom locks are available that meet the NASFM guideline. There are electronic classroom locks that are locked by pressing a button on a fob worn by staff members. Other electronic locks can be locked remotely or as a system-wide lockdown. However, the cost of replacing existing locks within an electronic product may not be feasible for all facilities. Remember, all of these lock functions allow free egress by turning the inside lever, as required by the model codes. In addition, all of these options allow authorized access from the outside by staff or emergency responders. 
Balancing life safety with security is critical when choosing a locking method for classroom doors. For more information on classroom door locks and other school security topics, visit www.idighardware.com schools. While the recommendations described in this video meet the NASFM guidelines, as always, check your local and state building codes and the authority having jurisdiction for the requirements in your locality. To watch more videos, visit our training page at www.allegion.com/us.